okay welcome back guys uh, today we are going to be discussing the part 2 of the heme 5 that is the hematolymphoid neoplasm updates that uh, have just been launched in july 2022 by the who last time we did part of the changes in the classification of the b cell lymphoid lesions today we'll be finishing the b cell lymphoid lesions and uh, then moving up with the t cell lesions right now i am only highlighting the changes that are there uh, once i uh, quickly go through the changes we will discuss each individual lymphoma changes in detail in subsequent lectures um, there are some changes in the mds maybe criteria i presume that will come out soon uh, there is also a paper where the icc and the who has been compared even that paper i would be dis be discussing in the next so coming 2 to 3 months instead of doing histohemat histohemat i'll do this so that in one uh, um, concise uh, module uh, we can finish whatever changes are there in the icc and in the who lymphoid uh, hematol lymphoid lesions okay after that again once the changes are there once we know what the set practices are uh, we can then further move ahead and uh, uh, go back to our trend of histohemat histohemat so i'm um, that is the reason i am taking out time to upload this lecture once every week instead of once every 15 days which i started doing because this is important and if i don't do it this way you will forget what we had discussed before so before starting quickly in the last lecture i had told you about the initial changes in the b suppose the a the precursor or the previously benign precursor lesions of b cell lineage have been included those uh, region uh, lesions jisko hum reactive bola karte the ya hum query query having some malignant potential sochte the they have been included like castleman etc initially only multicentric was there now the entire spectrum has been included ki kuch cheez has been included so these ki kuch cheez etc hum pehle nahi ya benign b, b cell lineage lymphoid hyperplasias ये सब अब इंक्लूड होने लगे हैं इन द डब्ल्यू एच ओ क्लासिफिकेशन इन द हीम फाइव बिकॉज इनिशियली ऑल्सो वेन वी यूज टू रीड इट एंड और डायग्नोज इट एक ये डिबेट जरूर रहती थी इट वॉज ऑलवेज अ डिबेटेबल पॉइंट वेदर दीज लीजन्स आर जस्ट बिनाइन और इन केस इन सम केसेज दे माइट प्रोग्रेस टू अ मलेगनेंसी नाउ इन इन आर सेटअप्स इन द इंडियन सेटअप्स एटलीस्ट वे वी आर वर्किंग एवरी इंस्टीट्यूट नॉट एम्स और पी Uh, loss to follow up was very common so if we diagnose something as maybe a query query reactive b cell transformation thinking that it might not progress but uh, maybe after 5 years the patient comes with a full blown lymphoma those lesions after extensive discussion by the who team has now been included as a part of the who hematol lymphoid neoplasm uh, classification then uh, the in the b precursor b cell lesions or the b lymphoblastic leukemias etc you have seen that translocation ke naam change hue the numbers were removed like kmta compared trans so they have removed the number before bcr abl1 they have uh, removed 922 before it secondly in uh, where they used to write bs bcr abl like they have added the word features where it was uh, lymphoblastic uh, lymphoma with hi uh, with hyperdiploidy they have added the word high hyperdiploidy so these nomenclatural changes have been there which uh, some people might say are uh, not very specific or they're just superficial changes but i do presume that uh, once the who book comes out because the paper of course does not tell you everything so once the who comes out we would maybe understand why they have you know added a word like features instead of just like or uh, they have you know added and the as far as adding two semicolons between bcr abl or two colons instead of one colon um, could be some sort of a lang genetic language which i am not very well aware of uh, i'm sure if a if a molecular genetist is over here a uh, molecular pathologist is over here that person who i might be able to interpret interpret that better i don't feel that who would do anything any change cosmetically or just you know just to um how shall i say it to do it superficially just for the sake of doing it so i feel even if they've added a word there has to be some significance to it right now i'm not able to understand that just through the papers but uh, definitely i think the book will uh, be more helpful when the book is launched the soft copy will be launched maybe next month the 
hard copy will be there in the seba and similarly in follicular lymphomas a lot of change the grading still done not removed from the who uh, the 1 2 3 ab uh, however it has become redundant it is not very important then nlphl has instead become nlbcl uh, uh, b cell lymphoma instead of nodular lymphoproliferative hodgkins lymphoma uh, then uh, other nomenclatural changes also i am not able to recall right now everything the when the classification is in front of me i'll be able to so these kind of changes here and there are there in the who and uh, then uh, uh, pro lymphocytic leukemia has been removed uh, variant hairy cell leukemia both have been clubbed under splenic uh, b cell neoplasm with large nuclei so such changes i have already discussed in the last lecture have been done uh, have been done in some lymphomas now i am going to be taking the remaining part so that uh, the b cell lesion lineage is complete and then we to t so this is the paper that you have to read and uh, then they have also uh, discussed that uh, on what uh, factors has the who changed so these were the factors it is a more pragmatic approach more molecular testings and of course in i have seen in other who's also not only hematolymphoid uh, they have added essential and desirable criteria essential means they have to be there they are morphological mostly desirable are those if they if they are there then it you know solidifies your diagnosis and they are mostly the molecular diagnosis that is being you know incorporated in now the classifications of both solid and blood tumors so now if you see the next classification cut uh, cutaneous i think we done till follicular the last time so cutaneous follicle center lymphoma under this entity primary cutaneous follicle center lymphoma remains the same it was there before mantle cell lymphoma just like a in situ follicular neoplasm has been added in the lesions of follicular neoplasm category in c2 mantle cell lymphoma has also been added mantle cell lymphoma and leukemic non nodal mantle cell lymphoma were there previously also transformation of indolent b cell lymphoma this thing was not there before now this entire entity has been added that an indolent those rickers transformation jab hum padhte the to now that that was always there in the text but not in the classification they have added that in the classification large b cell initially the double hit lymphoma is the mig bcl2 rearrangement one now instead of saying high grade b cell lymphoma with mig bcl2 and or bcl6 rearrangement they have completely removed bcl6 doesn't matter whether whether it is there or not secondly now it is called diffuse large b cell lymphoma or high grade b cell lymphoma with mig and bcl2 rearrangement possibly what they saw was not much prognostication could be obtained with bcl6 or even with mig bcl2 rearrangements there are some variations in the way the patient is responding so it is not a uniform labeling criteria that is what they have seen this is what i have understood from the paper i have to read more that is why they have removed bcl6 it doesn't matter whether bcl6 is mutated or not and they have just kept it as a diffuse large b cell lymphoma burkitt's like l with 11q aberration has now been removed. it has just become high grade b cell lymphoma with 11q aberration morphologically it resembles burkitt's a lot there are certain molecular features which match but it is not a it does not have the same response like burkitt's the complete molecular profiling is not like burkitt's that is why they are not using this term then uh, ebv hsv and kshv 8 have come into great limelight in this classification so burkitt like lim uh, sorry ebv positive diffuse large b cell lymphoma nos has now been just labeled as excuse me ebv positive diffuse large the nos has been removed okay fibrin associated and fluid overload large b cell b cell lymphoma were not there previously and now they have been added in the classification and uh, primary large b cell lymphoma of immune prevalent site a new entity added specially in sites arising like the vit uh, the vitreo retina the eyes and the testes these are the immune privileged sites have good immune immune cells and lymphoma of that area has been categorized separately then 
mediastinal gray zone lymphoma initially wh has always tried to remove the word gray zone but somehow they had to come back to this word where they had initially labeled b cell lymphoma unclassifiable with features between dl bcl and hodgkins actually we when we used to you know see this we used to discuss there are nothing they are gray zone lesions when you say that feature is in between something then that something is not defined and then it is not defined you call it gray zone so now who has come back to you know to using that word gray zone and calling it mediastinal gray zone lymphoma fine then next is the burkitts burkitts is the same then comes the kshv hhv 8 associated b cell lymphomas here kshv H, the primary effusion lymphoma has been there for ages now kshv hhv 8 positive diffuse large b cell lymphoma was initially known as only hhv 8 nos then see i told you na the kshv slash hhv8 has come in big time so wherever you used to see just hhv8 has now become kshv hhv8 and uh, instead of lymphoprolif uh, uh, sorry that instead of comes further so the word kshv has been added in germinotropic lymphoproliferative disorder now we used to study the post transplant lymphomas and we used to study the role of immunity in those post transplant lymphomas now what they have done is lymphoid proliferation in lymphomas associated with immune deficiencies and dysregulation new entity has come up where not only the deficiency but the dysregulation of the immunity leading to lymphomas is also being you know calculated and added so hyperplasias arising in immune deficiencies dysregulation were not included previously polymorphic lymphoproliferative disorders arising in immune deficiency slash dysregulation so these were the, the those those post transplant polymorphic lymphomas now they have come under the umbrella of immune dis, dysregulation ebv positive mucocutaneous ulcers lymphomas arising in general immune deficiency and another lesion instead of calling it a primary immune deficiency lymphoma they are calling it inborn error of immunity associated lymphoid proliferation reading out all these i can just tell you concentrate on the etiology most of the lymphoma the names have been changed as per the etiology hhv8 has been made kshv hhv ebv has come out big with it being it had come out in the for also hum jab ptlds padhte the the role of immunity was described in the pathogenesis now they have reversed the thing they have now put immunity as a classification and under that by changing the name a little they have said okay this lymphoma of post transplant is actually an immune dysregulation so it is an immune dysregulation lymphoma and not only dis deficiency but dysregulation also dysregulation can be hyper or hypoactivity of immunity deficiency normally is only hypoactivity so both the things have been added okay skins lymphoma are mostly same cold agglutinin disease has been added was not there previously and MGRS monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance clinicians used to use this term we never used it now we are going to use it then instead of primary amyloidosis they have defined as that immunoglobulin related al amyloidosis monoclonal immunoglobulin deposition disease instead of calling it lcddd like chain deposition lcdd we have no now called it monoclonal immunoglobulin deposition disease and then a new entity uh, uh, in the syndromes you knew poems and tempi have been there for be, there before then adenopathies and erythematic patches over the plasma cytoma this is asop that the adenopathies and skin patches over the lesion where the plasma cytoma is this entity has been added in the new one so this is for the b cell quickly i have finished it in 15 minutes this i had taken before that lymphoma mimics in, uh, included to help differentiate from lymphoma then etv6 renax1 bl bll added again those nomenclatures have been changed bbll removed crl only essential for markers have been defined transformation associated lymphoma ek term ban gaya clinic b cell lymphoma with prominent nucleoli atypical hcl as well as pro lymphocytic leukemia then non walden strom type lpl has been defined and follicle has become classical and uncommon type grading is redundant fl grade 3b is follicular large b cell lymphoma dlbcl is still germinal center type and activated b cell however 
it is redundant not removed so you can classify it but the clinician won't have any benefit from it it is for you as, uh, as a pathologist to do it double hit word has been removed and said the mutations have been verbatimly used pcl6 is now no longer part of the hits then burkett's lymphoma with 11q that name has been changed to high grade b cell lymphoma 11q17 mutation then uh, immune privilege site lymphoma like vitreoretinal dlbcls and testicular dlbcls have been added into that mediastinal graves and lymphomas have been introduced burkett's initially we know that ebv kiya jata hai but now they have stressed on it and made it a classification and classical hodgkins lymphoma uh, uh, the cause the subtyping is now redundant like nlphl ab nlphl nahi kaha ja raha hai b cell lymphoma kaha ja raha hai so but we do it you want to you can do it it is redundant not removed this one we'll discuss uh, later on and so that's it for today now next saturday sunday i'll come with the t cell lineage and then we'll go back go to the individual lymphomas and then the comparisons and by then the myeloid so i think four months three months i'll do this only so hopefully you understand there are so many things even i have to understand right now so to make you understand but i'm just discussing jo apparent changes dikh rahe hain is samay i'm just discussing that right now so i hope you understand this and like it and uh, let i see you next uh, lecture